Hey folks, quick one from the bench, or at least I hope it's a quick one. Earlier this year or late last year, I did a video talking about software defined radio. And I said when a friend of mine in Germany got his receivers and he was ready to go, we would cover that topic. Well, he got them in. He got the ones I recommended. I'll put a picture right here. Um, to me, these are some of the better ones on the market. But anyways, especially for the price. You know, it's a huge bang for the buck with these. Um, however, Horst ran into a problem very quickly. And that is, when they're both plugged in, he has difficulty telling them apart. Right? You can see it's device 0 on the chain, device 1 on the chain. Right? They are identical. The worst part is they are identical, including the serial number. Very quickly. <laughs> this is a pretty straightforward process if you have all of the RTL SDR libraries installed. Um, if not, let me know. I can create a second video and walk you through those on a fresh install. It makes it really easy. So right now we have one installed. We know it's device zero. Um, then RT, oh, RTL underscore EE prom because we're going to be writing to the read-only memory on the chip. I just need to double check this. I only do it about once a year and I always forget. Dash D and then the default is zero. So we could change that if we need. We want to change the serial number. So we're looking at dash S space the appropriate string. Okay. Let's quit out of that. Let's control L. Let's start a clear screen. RTL underscore E prom. We know that we're going to write to device zero. We just saw that on the test. And we want to change the string. It is six leading zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'll name this one 101. So yeah, again, we can verify our command line. We're looking at device zero, device zero. Current serial number is 001. We're gonna change it to 101, right? We're changing the serial number to 101 from 001 to 101. So that's correct, yes. Okay, now we're gonna unplug it. Plug it back in, because as you see, please, please re-plug the device. Yeah, essentially we're rebooting the device. Now let's just go back to the test and take a quick look and make sure, yep, our serial number changed. Good. So let's unplug that one. Plug the one in that we have not changed yet. There's, oops. A lot of reasons I unplug them, and that's just so I don't screw up. Um, it can happen that the device number doesn't change, so you might rewrite the one you just changed. Again, that's why you're shown that before you write it, but I try to remove all failure <laughs> from that chance. Okay, so we can just go back through our memory, our history, and we know we want to change this one to 102. Why? Because we made the other one 101. And again, we're going to change from device 1, uh, serial number 1, to serial number 102. We're going to write the configuration. We're going to unplug it. I'm going to plug it back in. I'm also going to plug back in the first one. Now I have two SDRs plugged in. Oh. Let's start with a clean screen, RTL test, there you go. Now we can much easier, <laughs> we can have a much easier time of determining which one is which. And in Windows it is still difficult to detect the serial number, but in most SDR applications on Windows, you will see a list very similar to this when you have multiple SDRs plugged in and you're selecting the SDR.
just to give you a quick idea, we'll show you what's plugged in. Serial number 1000, right? I know that 1000 is the serial number series that I use for aircraft. And the 100 series are what I use for VHF and UHF, essentially from 50 megahertz to 2 gigahertz. Um, I know for some of you that's Greek, but all right, anyway. <laughs> so now that's plugged in. Let's run back and take a look at Dump 1090. Get it going already. We've picked up three aircrafts right off the bat. So we'll go into this more in another video, but right now I just need to get horsed up and working. And hopefully this did it. All right, guys, we'll see you soon.